Sitting on a riverboat, having a party, me and my kids. Boy, that intro. I always love playing this song. It's one of the ones I ask the audience to sing along with, you know, because uh, they usually know the words. The year is 1894. Now, the year is 1894. Originally, there were several inspirations for this. Um, one of them was that uh, I've always been fascinated by the beginning of jazz because it wasn't recorded. You know, and there are lots of documentaries that describe the different influences that went into it, but none of them account for what happened that created jazz music you know really you know um, so it's something totally uh, North American and uh, anyway my fascination with that led me to realize that it would have been possible to ride on a riverboat in 1894 with one of the great early jazz bands and a little companionship <laughs> some supplies and uh, have a heck of a party so that was one inspiration I could have drunk a river dry. Mm, so I did drink a river dry, which is why I don't remember the recording process very well. <laughs> I was, if you know, so the great jazz musician Charlie Parker said, if you don't live it, it won't come out your horn. <laughs> you know, I think it went into my horn, but anyway, <laughs> some of it did. Um, the, another inspiration for it is that um, I had a friend in um, junior high who uh, uh, was, we came from a rather wealthy family who had land on Lake Muskoka and a number of cottages. We used to go up there and play music. He played the banjo, you know. Um, and the older guys built this raft um, uh, with, with a, uh, get this, a laundry basket under the raft as a beer cooler. So they could lift this trap door and they'd have cool beer from the lake, you know, um, in the laundry basket. But uh, that memory is part of this, too, you know. Uh, just being out on the river playing music. You know, so magical with the trees and that. I think that guitar that I soloed just now with uh, might be a little four pickup Japanese made early 60s guitar. The kind that had tons of knobs and stuff on it, most of which don't do anything. But uh, it was my dream guitar when I was 13 and somebody gave me one years later. And uh, if you, I, I could never use it live because it doesn't intonate very well, but in a studio, um, uh, cranked up, well you can hear the tone there. You know. yeah. I've always been fascinated by New Orleans, and I visited once in the early 70s, and New Orleans was the place that taught me that you don't have to be somewhere to live there in your heart, you know, 1890s Paris, or whatever, you know, you like. On a riverboat fantasy. Oh, yes. Uh, I remember in school, I got these stink bombs, these little glass ones you could buy on Young Street in Toronto. And um, we made a tactical error. This lick could be really cool if it was played on banjo because it really, I think it needs that little extra bit of color. So I stopped by Long and McQuaid and uh, talked to my buddy Bob Abbott and I said, Bob, session this morning, I need the best banjo you got in here. Could you just rent me one or loan me one? No problem, pick one out.